Hey everybody, welcome to the Shape It Up Over 40 show. Today I have a special guest and we're going to be talking about the five steps to achieving your goals without burnout. So welcome. I'm your host, Nicole Simonin, and I help women over 40 squash dieters mentality and lose weight for the last time. I have been doing this for over 20 years. I cannot believe that makes me feel really old, but <laughs> so if you are a regular to the show, then you know what's going on. Um, each week on the Shape It Up show on Tuesdays, I am coming to you and giving you my fitness, nutrition, and mindset wisdom. And then on Thursdays, I am bringing on a special guest that um, is kind of complimentary to whatever else is going on in your life. And I am so glad you guys are here today because my special guest is Wendy Lawson. So thank you so much for being here, Wendy, and I'm going to share your bio. So after two decades as a music marketing executive, Wendy traded in her backstage pass for graphic tees and created a system to help her clients achieve their goals without burnout and overwhelm. A goal-setting ninja, she believes the only thing you should wing is your eyeliner. She is powered by cold brew coffee, GIFs, and Dave Matthews. So welcome, Wendy, to the show. I'm so excited to have you here. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you for inviting me. Um, I'm excited to be here too. And I have to say <laughs> with your bio, it's so funny because I was a professional ballet dancer. We always did the wings because it mm -hmm. makes your, your eyelashes look so much longer on stage. Um, definitely a coffee lover over here. GIFs are my thing. <laughs> I am in a group and I'm called the GIF queen, which I wear that with honor. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's, that's a high honor. I mean, but you should be proud of that honor. Sometimes I'm a little stressed because I'm like, oh, I have to find the best GIF, <laughs> <laughs> but it's all good. I love the GIFs. They just make my day so much brighter. I don't know what it is. Like there's some that are just a little more magical than others, but yeah. Yeah. So, um, we met, I don't know, not too long ago and I'm so glad we did because we hit it off immediately. I love your sense of humor. Um, and I'm really glad that you're here. So tell everyone a little bit about how you started, like a little bit of background on you and how you started doing what you're doing now. Yeah. So I, um, I spent, as I shared, I spent 20 years in the live event marketing space. So basically what that, that's a fancy way of saying I was a concert promoter. I worked for arenas and, um, stadiums and worked, you know, brought in, made sure that we marketed uh, concerts and live productions that came in. So I did, did that you, for 20 years. Did you meet Dave and, Matthews? Oh yeah. <laughs> Your besties, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, if you ask me, did I meet Dave Matthews? Absolutely. If you ask Dave Matthews, have you ever met Wendy Lawson? He's going to be like, who? Yeah, right. <laughs> but, um, and it was a cool job. Like, don't get me wrong. It was a really cool job but it's a lot, it's long hours. It's on your feet. It's, uh, I've been married to my husband. Who's literally the most patient man on the planet for 15 years. And like for the first 10 years that we were married, I was never home on our wedding anniversary because I was at a show. Like mm -hmm. we always had shows. And so it just, I got burned out. I was really, I wasn't enjoying that anymore. Um, and you know, part of, of what I did when I was as a marketer, as a professional marketer for 20 years was really figuring out and laying out roadmaps and strategy and goals, um, or action plans to achieve our sales goals. And so I decided I was going to sort of transition and do that, um, as a coach for myself and become a marketing coach. But what I discovered as after I got my marketing certification and became a certified marketing coach and started working really with the people that I'm called to serve are, um, you know, women who own micro businesses or small businesses. And what I found was they were struggling with their marketing because they were struggling with setting sort of the big picture goals in their life. And so this roadmap format that I was using that tied in sort of a strategic way of setting goals, um, looking at different areas of your life, not just your business, and then adding in accountability sort of morphed into something bigger than what I initially had intended it to be. Um, and so that's kind of how I got where I am today. Awesome. I love hearing people's like journey to where they are today, because I always feel like there's a little special sauce in the sense of like, you know, we think it's one way <laughs> and then how it evolves and right. transforms. You're like, Ooh, it's even better than I thought. Yeah. Yeah. 
So let's dive into the topic. So five steps to achieving your goals without burnout. And I will let you take it away. All right. So, and I'm going to tell you, um, this, this whole without burnout is really is what drives me because I'm a type a go getter, like going to climb the mountain. Nothing's going to stop me. And which means I have, uh, spoiler alert, burned out like multiple times, right? Like, and so it was figuring out what's the way that we can achieve our goals when you want to do these really big things, you know, with your health and your fitness and your life and just ever in your business, all these areas of your life, you want really big things, but it's, it doesn't, ha- it takes a long time to your point when you're talking about, you know, people's origin stories, like we think it's going to be one way it's often different. It's rarely easy and it's rarely <laughs> joyful. <clears throat> right? Yeah. It's difficult. It's that the path becomes difficult. It's just difficult. It's a winding path. And so it's easy to become burned out. So I wanted to come up with a way, um, based on how I, how I personally burned out and really where I felt like I had gone wrong. This is like coming out of my mistakes of where, where I failed myself. Right. Mm. And so I really looked at how can I set goals that honor sort of who I am as a human being and what I need to thrive without, um, putting myself in a situation where I'm neglecting different areas of my life. Right. So if we're talking about business in particular, you know, we set these business goals, you own a business, I own a business. We set these business goals. And then we put on a lot of times we put on blinders for everything else in our life. Mm -hmm. And we just try to work on like, I'm just going to focus on my business. I'm just going to hit this sales goal. I'm just going to hit this revenue goal. And meanwhile, our, our health may suffer. Our relationships suffer. Our uh, mental health suffer. Like there's a lot of things that can suffer. So I created a system that would allow me to take all those components of our life, um, beyond just making money or beyond just any one area of our existence and really honor all of those as we're setting our goals. And so the five steps that we go through, can I share those now? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> so the first thing, cause I get Nicole, I get excited about this stuff. I start I talking and I'm just like, <laughs> everybody take a break. Wendy's going to, Wendy's going to talk for 27 minutes now. No, no I kidding. love it. And you know what? Here's the thing. I think when you, cause I know when we first met, we probably could have talked for six hours straight. But yeah. like when you're really passionate about what you do, I think it just, you just, it just flows out of you, yeah. you know? And yeah. So share with us. All right. So the first step is, um, audits. So it's, it's, I like things to be real simple and I like things to be easy. So I'm just going to tell you the five steps are A, B, C, D, E. Okay. So the first step is audit. And I think that this is, this is something that not a lot of people really think about, But when we look at our goals, it's all about moving closer to what we want, right? So when you set a goal, whether it's a health goal or a financial goal or, you know, date night goal, whatever it is, relationship goals, it's because you're trying to move closer to really what you want, Mm -hmm. but you have to know where you are, right? It's like, it's like, you can't just say, I'm going to run a race if you don't know where the starting line is and just think, well, I'm going to go like, if you're running a half marathon, you can't just like run 13 Start. miles and yeah. be like, <laughs> right here. I win. Right? <laughs> you have to really know where you're starting from. And right. so the audit gives you a chance to do that. And you're really just looking at, you know, all these areas of your life and saying, okay, how content am I with each of these areas? Because if you know that you're content with, um, if you're content with your mental health, so like where you are with your mental health, or are you content with where you are with your spirituality or content with where you are with your finances, then you don't need to set goals for that because you're already content there, right? You want to f- focus on the things where you're not content, where you feel like there's some room for improvement. Um, so we start with doing that audit. It sounds like it's, you know, the IRS is coming. It's not scary. I promise. <laughs> you need okay. a spreadsheet and <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. it's really not all that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I agree. The second Oh, I was just going to say, I agree with that too. Like with my clients is like, you have to, you know, I think everyone, especially with weight loss is like, I just want to be thin. I just want to be where I want to be. And you have to understand and kind of, um, not necessarily accept, but just be sufficient in where you are starting from, you know, like nothing is wrong. It's just like, you just want something a little different than what's presenting in your life. 
So yeah, checking in and finding out like, yeah, okay, this is where I'm here and kind of being really honest and upfront with yourself and then be like, okay, so what am I going to do? That's right. And remember numbers. I talk about this from a revenue perspective, but it applies to you and your clients from a weight perspective. Numbers have no emotion. Numbers are just facts. Numbers are neutral. Yes. <laughs> That's right. I always say weight loss is about the math, uh, literally, but it's all the drama that comes up. That's the problem. Right. You know, it's the mind drama of like, I can't eat that. Why, you know, why can she eat that and be skinny? And I can't, you know, all those <laughs> thoughts. <laughs> no, I love that. You said numbers are neutral. I love that. Yeah. Numbers are you just can facts. Feel that. Just, Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Take it. Thank you. <laughs> it's all yours. <laughs> All right. So we're going to do So first thing you want to do is you want to do your audit. Then the second thing you want to do is brainstorm. And this, um, this is a really fun activity to do because the way I look at brainstorming and the way I recommend people look at brainstorming, particularly when they're thinking about their goals is that you don't just say, don't put yourself in a, like, well, what do I want in next year? What do I want in my life? Right. That's a lot of times what we do. Like, Oh, I really want to have a hot tub. Or I really want to have, you know, more date nights or, but imagine, you know, activate sort of your imagination where we all have imagination. It's free to use, which is pretty awesome, right? <laughs> right. Your imagination costs you nothing, um, but um, like imagine it's one year later and you just had the best year ever. Like, don't think, don't, you're not, don't think about goals. Just think like, if you just had the best year of your life, what happened? Like, what were you doing? that made it the best year ever. Yeah. Instead of saying, I'm going to make more money or I'm going to run a marathon or I'm going to do whatever, right? Like really looking at, imagine it's a year later and what are you proud of? What got you excited? What, like, what happened that was so awesome? That becomes the basis for your short-term girls goals that you set, your annual goal and then your short-term goals because you're already excited about that. Yeah. And I think, um, just to comment on that, like our brain thinks in pictures. Yeah. Like the way we think, like if I told somebody to imagine a purple horse, you can't help but think of a purple horse. I saw it. <laughs> yeah. So like for your brain to like create who you want to be, I think is so much fun. It's like, even as a kid, you know, we were told to stop daydreaming, stop zoning out, whatever it was that you were told, but like, that's, that's like your dream area that, and I think we lose that as we get older, like allow yourself yeah. to go there. Um, the other thing that you had said about, you know, a year ahead or whatever it is, I always like to, with my clients is I'm like, imagine who you are at that lower weight or whatever it is. Like, what does she do? What does she experience? How does she smell? What does she eat? <laughs> I mean, like get into the nitty yeah. gritty, not just like, oh, I want to lose 20 pounds. Because it's so much more, the more you can visualize it and basically become like the done version, you yes. have this like level of like, there's almost like this level of belief, like, yeah, okay, I, I can do that. You know, it's like, it is possible. It's not like you're hundred percent in belief, but you're like, yeah, okay. That sounds, well, you know, what's really interesting, Nicole, is that your brain doesn't recognize the difference between, um, Fantasy when you it. visualize something, whether it, <laughs> whether it's really happened or if it's just visualization. And I will tell you like, this is science. Okay. I'm not a science person, <laughs> but I will tell you, I experienced this firsthand. I, um, several years ago, I broke my ankle. I broke it in three places. It was a bad, bad break. It was a cleaning accident. I don't clean anymore. Like <laughs> that's a good reason. I, <laughs> but so I broke, I fell down a flight of stairs cleaning my oh. back deck, like a full oh flight of stairs gosh. and landed on You're a lucky brick that's walkway. All that happened. I know. And I was home by myself and I had to like pull myself up the stairs. It was a whole thing. You need the, anyway. what, is, what is that? Not the clapper. What's that? <laughs> I fall and I can't get up. <laughs> oh, the, the, um, life, life alert. alert. <laughs> right. So I like, so this, this is traumatic, right? This was a traumatic fall. Yeah. Um, I really hurt myself. I ended up having to have multiple surgeries. I have like fishing line and I feel like that's, what's holding my legs together. It was like, line? there's like plates Where and screws and surgery? some fishing line. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It looks, it just looks like it's like, it's some wire thing. But anyway, after that happened, after the accident happened, I, about three days after the accident happened, I was laying on the couch and I was thinking about, I remembered what happened 
And my body had a full, like physical response to that memory. Yeah. And I had never experienced anything like that. And I was like, wow, that really does. Like, it's true that y- your brain doesn't, is this really happening? Or is this a memory? Is this, yeah. is this a future dream? Your brain doesn't know. No. Yeah. Think of like movies. Um, I always give this example. Like when you watch a horror movie and you're into it, like, like a lot of times mm-hmm. I watch, I don't really watch horror movies, but like, I'm like, yeah, that's just <laughs> catch up. That's not real, you know? But when you're really into it, like you, there's a visceral, like heart palpitations, you know? Scary. Yes. Um, even like dramas and, and any kind, I mean, that's what the whole point of a movie is to evoke this emotion. Your brain doesn't understand right. what's real and what's not, which can be totally used to our advantage. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. When you, when you get into that visualization process, right. Of yeah. who you are, when you achieve that goal or what it is that you really want. So, um, we are team brainstorm here, team visualize <laughs> it here I'm on the Nicola Windy show today. <laughs> We should totally have a show. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Then the third step, and this is, this is different. This is, I think what kind of makes my system a little bit different from what other people are doing relative to goal setting is you look at your capacity because normally most people, they set their goal and they say, okay, I'm going to work out five times a week, or I'm going to, um, I, I'm going to make 50 calls a day, whatever it is, right? They, they set their goal and they know what, what steps they need to do on a daily basis, but then they don't know how long that really takes. Mm-hmm. So I look at this the same way as pouring coffee into a mug, right? Like there's only so many hours in the day and you already have other things that you have to do to maintain, you know, to stay alive, just like basically stay alive. Like you have to sleep, you have to eat, you have to bathe. Y'all really, you have to bathe, okay? (laughs) To stay alive is necessary. Like there's a lot of things that we need to do, right? You have to, I don't know if you have children, you have to like raise them and not (laughs) let them be wolves. I don't have kids. So I don't know what you people do with your kids, but I have dog, I have a dog and cats. Like there's things you have to do. So there's only so much time that you can spend on your goals. If you know how much time in advance that you have to allocate to your goals, then you can set goals that match that time. So you're pouring the correct amount of, coffee in the coffee cup. If you don't know, and let's say you say you're going to work out five hours, uh, you're going to work out five days a week, but the workout that you're doing is a two hour walk. If you don't have 10 hours a week, it's not going to work. Right. So you're not going to meet your goal. Yeah. So now you're trying to pour 30 ounces of coffee in a 12 ounce mug because yeah. you just don't you have, have the time. Lot. You have an espresso cup That's right. <laughs> and you have a pot of coffee. <laughs> right. You're pouring your 60 ounces of coffee into 2.7 ounce cup, right? So we really want to look at how much time do we have available for our goals on the front end. And then we set our goal according to that time, because Nicole, you know, that goals if, it, if you can achieve something in three months, you can achieve that same goal in a year. And it doesn't make it any less impressive if it takes you a year than it took you three months. But if you try to get it done in three months and you don't get it done in three months because you don't have the time, what happens? How do you feel? Yeah, this is why I am out to squash the dieters mentality because everybody wants a 12 week program and like, like 10 pounds lost in a week. And that is not realistic. And if you do achieve that, guess what? 20 pounds is going to be added back onto you. It's not. Yeah. I, and, and then like you're saying, there's a whole level of shame and self deprecation about like, oh, I must be horrible because all these testimonials I see on a website say they did it in, you know, five minutes and I took a week. (laughs) Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's very frustrating for me. Again, that's why like, I'm very passionate about like dieters mentality because kind of like what you were saying in your origin story, you know, you were burnt out all the time. That's, that's the reason why I started really focusing on women over 40 and the dieters aspect, because I mean, I remember being in the fetal position crying because an outfit didn't fit me because I was going Mm -hmm. to an event. I mean, and that may sound very superficial to somebody, but someone who's like really in the dieters mentality of like, and body image issues um, that's a sucky place to be. And I just don't want anybody. I want people to know that it's, 
you don't have to, it doesn't have to be like that. It doesn't yeah. have to be. Yeah. Sorry, I went on a little tangent there. No, that's okay. I'm, I'm a little saddened now for you. I'm sad for past you that was well, I the appreciate outfit. that, but if I hadn't gone through that, I wouldn't be where I am right now. Right. And I wouldn't be helping right. the people that I'm helping. So I am appreciative. If I can go through that suck by myself, <laughs> if I'm out <laughs> right. on the other end, it's all good. I don't mind at all, but thank you. Right. And that, isn't that part of this? That's like always part of the story is it takes that, it takes the hard thing to get to the beauty. Yeah. Just yeah. I love um, talking about that, like a diamond, like you got to yeah. chip it away and, and do all whatever they do to diamonds. And then there's this beautiful thing at the end. Yeah. All right. So step three capacity. Okay. So you're going to determine how much time do you have? There is no right or wrong answer. You just determine how much time you have based on all the other things in your life. And then the last two steps, um, sort of are work together. So D is define, define your goal, right? You have to set your goal. Um, you have to know what it is that you want. And I'm going to say that again, because a lot of times people don't know what they want right? They want to lose weight. Well, what does that mean? Like what exactly, right. how much exactly do you want to lose, right? You want to define your goal. And I like to use the three D's, which means it's going to be definite. So it's very clearly defined. It's going to be doable, which means it involves you doing the action to bring it to fruition. Okay. So it needs to be something that you can physically make happen. If it, if it involves someone else doing something, if there's dependencies, mm -hmm. then you can do everything you can, but you still can't bring that goal to fruition. So uh, you want to make sure that it's doable. And then finally, you want to have a deadline, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to lose 10 pounds in 10 weeks. So I'm going to write or, or 12 weeks or six months or whatever it is. Um, but that's where you start getting like really definite, really doable and really defined. So the last step, and this is where people fumble. People can set goals. Nicole, people can set goals. They don't mm -hmm. need me to tell them how to set goals. I don't need you to tell them how to set goals. They know how to set goals. Problem is they don't eat, execute. Right? Right. Right. You've got your goal. Now you have to do the work to make it happen. So I like, I talk a lot about execution with accountability because uh, it's hard. It's hard to stay motivated and do things consistently by yourself. It's easier to do it with others. And so accountability can look like a lot of different things. It can, it can look like having a coach. It, it can look like having a accountability partner. It can look like being in part of a challenge group. Like there's a lot of ways that you can build in accountability, but the only way you're going to achieve your goals is through executing mm -hmm. um, and doing consistent, you know, consistently doing the work to, to take the steps to achieve your goals. Yeah. Um... Oh, I just lost my train of thought. This happens to me all the time. <laughs> Being over 40. Uh, what were you saying about, oh, accountability. So one of the things that I like to work on with my clients in the sense of like, cause everybody comes to me and they're like, oh, I really just want your accountability, you know, keep me on task. And I used to do that to the point where I was like the hawking mother <laughs> in the sense <laughs> of like, <laughs> I would message my clients on the weekend. So the app that I use, um, I get a notification when they do their workouts. And if I didn't get the notification on a Sunday or a Saturday, I was, e I was messaging to them saying like, okay, what's going on? Are you okay? Why didn't you do the workout? And I found that there's like this codependency that happens, which I think initially, so like when people come to work with me, yes, they're getting accountability from me, but I teach them how to be accountable to themselves. Because yeah. there's a part, and there are certain people that gravitate, like they're better in group settings. Like there are people who enjoy going to like aerobics classes and things like that, weight loss wise. Um, but then there are people that like, I feel like a lot of times people are like, oh, Aunt Sally or best friend Jane, be my accountability buddy. But they're going to let you slack. Listen. <laughs> I have opinions on this. Listen, my husband is the most amazing man on the planet, but if I'm trying to work on some health and fitness goals, my husband is literally the worst person in the world to be my accountability partner because <laughs> there are going to be times when he wants pizza for dinner or yeah. he's going to want, he's going to want to blow off a workout. Like 
Yeah. He's and that's why not... I feel like finding it inside yeah. and having that motivation inside to show up um, because again, that it all ties in everything that you're saying all ties into the sense of like, and um, I wanted to touch on it when we get to your book, but like the core of yourself, if you value and love yourself, you're going to make different choices than if you're relying on external situations to, or people yeah. to kind of dictate what happens to your goals. And I feel like that's so key. And it's, it's not easy because especially if you're someone who has always been like reliant on other people or, or the perfect circumstance, you know, like we all have the, the one thing about dreaming, you know, especially in weight loss, you're like, oh, well in this perfect week that I've designed, I do hit the gym six days and life isn't perfect. There's crap that comes in, but understanding how to navigate your way through that. And I think that's part of what you're saying is like, we, a lot of us don't execute and it's because, yeah. you know, it's, it's a lot of us focus externally rather than internally. Once you figure that out. And I think uh, sometimes the challenge with the execution portion too, is people don't know how to break down the actions that they need to take hmm. to just get started. Right. So yeah. if someone's working on, um, if someone's working on a, a long, a big, sort of a big goal, that's going to like a major weight loss or, you know, major fitness goals or, um, something big in their business. They don't know where to start. They don't know how to, how to really frame a roadmap that shows them the path to go from where they are today to where they want to be. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Those little bite-sized chunks. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Or we're taking too big of a bite. Like sometimes, um, like most, there are some clients of mine that go to a gym and I, or even like if a lot of my clients work out at home, but, um, what I tell them, if they're having trouble, like getting to the workout and pushing play to like do the workout, I'm like, okay, let's break it down really small at such and such a time. You're going to put your workout clothes on. At such as now you're going to put your shoes on. Now you're going to tie them because a lot of times our brain, especially, um, you know, those who are listening to my show know I talk about the primitive brain in the sense of like, it doesn't want to do it. You know, we <laughs> want to dream big, but when it comes time to like executing, we're like, no, I'd rather sit on the couch and watch Netflix. And, but chunking it down into small, 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 like small, stupid <laughs> steps. Yeah. I think our brain can get on board. They're like, yeah, of course I can put my shoes on. Yeah, of course I can tie my shoes. Of course I can walk downstairs. Yes, I can push play, you know, and like, it's right. <laughs> really, really easy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, so those are the five steps, right? Yep. Okay, so I have a question for you. Yes. One of the things you had said was why you need to think like meatloaf when setting goals. And that piqued my interest. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is it the song? I, it is. And I'm talking about Meatloaf, the singer, not right. Meatloaf, the, the food. food. Okay. <laughs> now, you know, you remember Meatloaf's song, I would do anything for love, but I won't do that. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Part of when we're setting our goals, we want to think about, we want to think about what we want, kind of like Meatloaf in the, I want this, but I won't do that. I'm a big fan of figuring out exactly what you're not willing to do before you set your goal. Mm -hmm. So we think about when you go through the brainstorming process and you think about, okay, this is, this is what I, this is, it's been my best year ever. This is what happened. These, these are kind of the things that I want to set goals towards. Then you want to think about why out of all the things that you could have picked, why does that matter to you? And you know how important it is to really understand your emotional connection to the goals that you're setting. Okay. So once you know the emotional connection, you think you're solid, right? Like I want to lose, I want to lose the weight because I want to feel better in my skin or because I want my clothes to feel better or whatever it is. Okay. So you, then you have your emotional connection. Then you want to say, okay, I, even though I want that, here's what I'm not willing to do because Nicole, our brain 
you're smart. I'm smart. Your listeners are smart. We already know that like, there's a lot of things we wouldn't do because our brain says, and I'm just going to use weight loss for an, as an example, my brain are like, I know to lose weight. I have to consume less calories than I use. Right. <laughs> like it's not, it's, it, it's math. pretty simple. Yeah. It's, it's not math, rock right. It's, yeah. it's pretty simple. However, what, how my brain translates that. Okay. What my brain says to me to lose weight, I have to work out all the time. I can't eat fried food. I can't have the foods that I like, right. I have to probably have to give up coffee. I'm gonna have to give up sugar. Like I'm gonna have to eat like all yeah. of us do this, right. Yeah. All of us do this. So we, that's why we want to be like meatloaf and be like, okay, I want to lose weight. I want to lose weight, but I'm not willing to give up fried food. I'm not willing to work out 500 hours a week. I'm not willing to, it's okay. We're allowed to say there's things we don't want to do. Yeah. And the minute we commit to not doing those, now we can start thinking of, okay, well, what am I willing to do? Yeah. And this honestly is why I designed my program the way it is, because there are no foods off limits. There are no diets. There's no special pills or potions that you have to drink. Nothing yeah. like that. And even the workouts, um, like uh, for those listening, check out, I think it's two podcasts or two episodes ago, Mickey's um, story. Um, and she's not alone in the sense of like workouts. My workouts that I give my clients are less than 30 minutes a day and they're not doing them every day. It's like three days a week, maybe. So my goal is really to find things that you love to do that, that require your body to move. Right. And with food, again, it's the math equation. Like, again, it is calories in and calories out. I don't always present it that way because that's dieters mentality of like, oh my gosh, I have to eat 1200 calories and, you know, and I don't get into that. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, there is a way to get around that where it's simple and easy and, and exactly like you're saying, because everyone has these thoughts because the diet industry has been like, no, you can't have carbs. You can't have, you can only have black coffee with butter. You can only do all these like intense restrictive things. And who wants to live like that? Nobody. Not this girl. <laughs> yeah. And so immediately when people are like, okay, well, if I have to do all these things and some of them may be like, okay, I'm in. And then it blows up in like two weeks because they just can't, it's not their normal lifestyle. But like, you know, a lot of people look at that list and are like, screw it. I don't want to do this. That's not fun. You yeah. Know? And um, so again, that, that really is like the premise behind of why I started I, my business has evolved over the years, but why I really hone in on that fact of like, it can be simple. You can be over 40 and still lose weight. You don't have to work out hours and hours at the gym. You don't have to flip tires. If you don't want to, you don't have to do a thousand <laughs> lings or pull-ups or anything like that. So yeah. And I feel like, um, like exactly what you're saying. Most women are like, yeah, here's the list of what I don't want to do. And then they're like, you know, but then what's next? Right. So then you figure out what am I willing to do? Yeah. Yeah. But I think, and tell me, you can use your opinion, but like, I feel like there's, there's like this little sliver where they're looking through this crack going, okay, this is like, if I, if I like, if I allow myself to eat fried food and all that stuff, like there's like, how do I get, (laughs) how do I get the result that I want? Because we're taught you can't have fried food. You can't have all this. Right. You know? And you well, have to do all that. I think part of what happens when we, when we say, I want this, but I'm not willing to do this. So instead I'm willing to do, we're now, we're putting ourselves in a, in a position of power. Right. Yeah. And we're saying, um, and we're, and we're going back to brainstorming. We're saying, okay, this is the outcome that I want but I'm not willing to do these things. So what am I willing to do? And sometimes that's all we need to do to say, okay, you know what? I am willing to start walking the dog every day. I am willing to, and sometimes it's just those baby steps. That's enough to get us started. Yeah. Or we can, or we can start seeing things differently. Yeah. Yeah. I think having the option of possibility and knowing that you have 
options is, mm -hmm. is incredible for people because I don't think in my experience, a lot of women think that there are options. It's either diet. And I know we're talking about weight loss, but like it's either diet and kill myself at the gym, or I stay the weight that I am for the rest of my life and possibly get bigger. <laughs> like, I don't feel yeah. like there's, there's, it's very black and white. A lot of times with, um, you know, the people that I work with, they're very high achievers and very perfectionists and there is gray in the middle. <laughs> Embrace the gray shades, people. <laughs> but, <laughs> for a different show. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right. So, um, let me, let's talk about your book. I would love to talk about <laughs> the 90 day slay a goal achievement planner. So I have to tell you, Nicole, I never in my life imagined that I would create a physical product and sell a physical product. Like I left the concert business. I was just going to be a coach. And I don't mean to say just be a coach, but like I was very much in a, I'm going to serve people. Like I'm a service provider. And then I really felt like there was a need for this product. And this actually came out of what I was using for my accountability group. So I was trying to come up with something that would help um, my accountability small groups that I run have resources that would help them through the 13 weeks of our program. And it turned into this planner, um, which goes through, it's, it's a 13 week planner. So it's not an annual planner. It's a three month planner or uh, 13 week. 90 days, actually 90, I think it's 92 days. I was going to say, I think that's funny. Cause when you said 13 days or 13 weeks, I was like, wait a minute, <laughs> Isn't that 12 weeks. No, cause 12 weeks 13, would only right. be right. Yeah. 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 And math. Have, again, have, we're back to the math. I know that's stupid math. Anyway, I want to interject before you get into the book. If you have not gone to Wendy's website, you must, <laughs> because I went on there and I almost peed myself laughing because it was like the way you word your copy <laughs> and the names of your, um, and I don't know them off the top of my head, but oh, the bundles. Yes. If you're an eighties girl, <laughs> you're going to love reading her website. So, <laughs> Oh, that's fun. I like to keep it fun. I literally, and I'm telling and my husband, I guess we have a little different sense of humor, but I'm like laughing on the couch, sitting next to him. And I'm like, look, and he's like, okay, <laughs> are you all right? <laughs> I was like, I, this is hysterical. I, I'm going to, I'm going to give your, your listeners a little tease. They're going to be like, I don't understand what she's talking about. So my husband was looking at, I was showing him all the notepads when they came in mm -hmm. initially. And there was only one he didn't get and it was no diggity. <laughs> and I was like, wait, what? How, did you like, how do you not understand this? Yeah. Is he old? So yeah. Was he no in diggity. the 80s? He, he said he went to country at that point. He had moved over oh. to the country music. So there was a lot of uh, no diggity in our house that week. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we sidebar. All right. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. I, I see. I start talking about music and then I just okay. go, that's where I go. No, I think it was hysterical. Yeah. <laughs> so the 90 day slay planner, um, goal achievement planner, it really is designed to help people create three goals that they can work on, um, and achieve in 90, I think it's technically 92 days, but 13 weeks. Um, and what I love about this, this, pro, this product so much is that it, uh, it goes through the beginning section. It goes through all of the steps that I talked about earlier, um, with worksheets to help you actually build the right goal. And then you actually build a roadmap where you're laying out what you need to do each week in the 13 weeks to achieve your goal. And then it's a 13 week planner. So you can actually plan out um, your time and your tasks for 13 weeks so that you can make sure that you're focusing on those activities that help you reach your goal. So um, it really is, this is not a calendar. This is not an agenda type of planner, right? This isn't a put all your appointments and, and record everything that you're gonna do <laughs> for the next year. Um, check your calendar. I mean, I personally use a digital calendar, mm -hmm. yeah. um, because I live in 2022. 
I mean, I shouldn't say that. That's kind of snarky. But, you know, like, especially I think so many of us now we use our Google Calendar because yeah. like it's just easier. It is. It's on your you phone. Can think or everything. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I will um, say I do have a plain paper one. I don't have it in front of me. It's like super skinny and it literally just lists the months just so I get a broader perspective of like different yeah. things. I don't really use it that much. But I did get your 90 day slay for those that are watching. It's in my hands right now. And I read through the entire thing and I love the way you lay it out. And it's really like step by step. Like it really walks you through the in the whole goal setting process. Now, I haven't done it yet, <laughs> but like I know <laughs> we were talking off camera. Um, I plan on doing it either today or tomorrow. Um, because I just finished up another 90 day thing that I was doing with my coach. So this is on my task sheet for today. So awesome. definitely. Yeah. What? Go ahead and tell. What else? Oh, no, I was just, I think that's awesome that you're getting ready to do it. Um, one of my favorite things about this planner is we, we were talking earlier about how important accountability is. And so there's actually accountability built into this planner um, at the three three weeks, seven week and 10 week mark, where you're really checking in to make sure um, that you are on track with your goals. And if not, what needs to be adjusted? So we're adding in that layer of accountability um, right in the planner so that you don't lose track because let's all be honest, it's easy to get into the motions of life. I mean, there's a lot of things that pull for our attention and we're busy and kids are being homeschooled and I don't know. Husbands want to eat every single day and, you know, just stuff. Life, yeah, life, life happens, life gets right. lifey. Um, so it's easy to, to just sort of get into a rhythm and you kind of forget what your big picture is. Right. Yeah. It, I think yeah. it's happened to all of us. Um, or it's happened to me. I shouldn't say it happened. It's happened to me. <laughs> it's happened to a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. Cause I think right. you get into that goal and you're like, and then you just kind of start going along and then like, I think there needs to be a level of like, okay, it's time to evaluate. Where am I yeah. at? You know, like yeah. if you are driving from New Jersey to California and you don't know where you are <laughs> in the middle of the United States, you need to find right. that out, you know, cause right. then you know what to adjust. <laughs> like if you're in Canada, you went the wrong direction. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, um, yeah, so there's, so that's built into, into this as well. And I think, I know you said you've read the whole thing. You haven't actually done your goals yet, but it. <laughs> can we talk about, um, this is a weird thing for me to say, but I'm just going to say it. Can we talk about how pretty this thing is? It is beautiful. Literally. Like it is beautiful. Like I, I'm a very, if you say you person. don't, I was gonna say, if you say you don't want to write in it because it's so pretty, I'm gonna cut. Oh, no, no, get no. In, I'm driving to New Jersey, New Jersey right now. <laughs> I will say one thing I love in some of um, journal, like journal ish books or, or planners I've seen have that glossy paper that oh, when I can't you write, write on that. it, it just smudges. Yeah. And yours is not. But yeah, I absolutely love, like, visually for me, it's like eye candy because I can see, like, even like, you know, when you're breaking down the blocks and stuff like that, it just makes sense. Like, it just seems easy. And I love the little sayings that you have in between. Mm -hmm. Like, this one is, I am worth showing up for. Come on, people, that one, just take that. <laughs> <laughs> like that to yourself every day because you are worthy of the day you were born right well how are you yep. showing up in the world um yeah and I think that's key to now let's go off on another tangent but like who you want to become like the goal that you're after you're after it for a feeling like you want to feel something yeah and how you show up every day and this goes into like the visualizing how we were talking about your brain doesn't really know the difference when you, so say you're overweight and you want to show up as a 20 pound less version of you, you show up differently each day. And when you do that on day one, that just propels you. And so eventually, and this is something that I teach with my clients in the sense of like, you know, I'm not just teaching you to lose weight. I'm teaching you to lose weight for the last time. So as we're going through and losing the weight, I'm teaching you how to maintain that weight loss to become the person 
that does maintain that weight loss and keeps it off because yeah. who you are today is what you've created today. You're not the, you're not going to be the same person, you know, and some people that's scary because they're like, oh my gosh, like an identity crisis. Like, who am I going to yeah, be yeah. then? But yeah. I promise you it's going to be better. And that's for any goal, any goal that you set, you have to become a different person. You have to be that person today. Yeah. You know? But yeah, it's a little side tangent there, but yes, I absolutely love it. I think it's fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. I, I have to tell you, I say I'm, I am so impressed with how pretty it is. And I had literally nothing to do with that. Like, that's why I can say <laughs> that. Like I worked with a designer, but I just think, um, that like the feedback that I, that I've gotten the most since it, since it launched is just that how, um, really pretty it is. It's very feminine, but how pretty it is. And the um, one thing that people say, it's like a dagger to my heart is it's too pretty to write. in. I'm like, no, it's not. No, it's absolutely not too pretty to write in. Go write it. <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. I'm not afraid to write in things at all. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. So tell everybody where you can get this. Yeah. So you can order, um, the 90 day slay on the 90 day slay. That's nine zero. Um, so the 90 day slay.com. A Y not Santa slay. <laughs> Thank you. There's all kinds of things I need to explain. In okay. So it's, if, if you don't get it, everybody, it'll be in the show notes. Um, so don't worry about it. Yeah. And I oh. actually have a, can I, can I share a special yes, offer? Please. Yeah. So, um, I do have a coupon code for your listeners. They can save 10% with, uh, code, shape s h a p e and that is good through the end of this month awesome everyone's gonna love it you have to go and get this book for sure <laughs> and that coupon's good on those uh on those bundles too so you can get oh, some of those fun yes, the to-do fun no list no bundles. you'll know exactly <laughs> what i'm talking about when you get there <laughs> all right so we're gonna jump into the speed rounds yes ready yes I can't ask you that because I know the answer. I was going to say coffee or tea, but we know it's coffee. Um, <laughs> all right. What's your favorite book and why? Ooh. Um, oh, snap. That's like asking <laughs> me to ask which of my children is my it's favorite. favorite. <laughs> For those listening, they can't see that I have like two, three bookcases behind me. <laughs> um, okay. Let's narrow it down. What is your favorite movie that you've watched in the past, say, year? Okay, the favorite movie that I've watched in the past year. Um, so this isn't a movie, but we're gonna you're gonna let it slide. Okay. My husband and I are watching <laughs> Game of Thrones right now. Oh, okay. I have so not that's a seen series that. yeah. on HBO, and it's it's a little it's a little sexier and a little more violent than I would normally go for. Um, but the storytelling is really great. Like there's, I mean, you really get drawn into these characters. So. Yeah. Um, when I had COVID uh, not too long ago, I binge watched Ted Lasso. So Ooh. put that on your list if you haven't watched it really good. Really okay. Good and funny. So I'll leave that out there. Okay. What is, okay. So this one's special for you. Who was your favorite besides Dave Matthew, but Dave Matthews, who was your like favorite celebrity that you got to introduce or whatever in your job that you had? Okay. So, so, um, number one, I'm saying number one, cause there's going to be more than one. <laughs> okay. 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 Well, let's number try. one, just, there's going to be two. Number one, the highlight of my career highlight. It could not get any better was in 2002 it was the band u2 mm -hmm. on the elevation tour 2001 sorry elevation tour and u2 was like what my one of my favorite bands when i was in high school and 
Um, they had a big heart on the stage that Bono, like a big heart platform that they would walk out onto. And so Bono actually like sang and like spittled on my face, like singing and, you know, just like, <laughs> and I, and I honestly, it was a sold out concert. I was living in Las Vegas at the time. It was a sold out concert. And I was like, literally nothing can ever get better than this. Like, okay. So did you is... wash your face or is it like, <laughs> no, you know I've never people... watched. <laughs> I was kind of like that night I was talking to a photographer and I was like, I don't even know what am I supposed don't to do? Touch. Like how do yeah. like, Bono can spit? I, like what peel do it you off do? And put it on a... <laughs> But I will tell you the nicest. Um, so my favorite people that I ever met that were just amazing and gracious and just really laid back was the band ACDC. Oh, okay. Like out of all of the bands and all of the people I've met 20 years in the industry, there's a lot of them. Yeah. Like they yeah. stand out as the just most chill, gracious, not a big deal, not pretentious at all, just really humble human beings. That's really cool. Yeah. Really cool. Good. All right. What, um, okay. I'm going to give you this one. If you could only choose one song to play every time you walked into a room for the rest of your life, what would it be? Uh, That's easy for me. It would be all I do is win by DJ Khaled. I don't know that song. Um, an old one? All I it's, do is it's a few years old. I will have to check it out. Who's it by? DJ Khaled. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Cause I'm obviously over 40. Is it K? <laughs> K-A-L? K- it's K-H-A-L. I think it's Khalid. Okay. There I we think. go. Yeah. Okay. I've heard him, but I don't know if I've heard the song. Cool. Very cool. All right. Anything you want to share? with the audience, like one takeaway, one, whatever, golden nugget, no pressure. The, well, here's the, so, um, two, <laughs> <laughs> second time you've asked me for one thing. I'm going to give you two. Okay. Number one is, you know, everything is, I think it's so important for people to remember that everything is possible with time and intention. It just takes time and intention to get there. And so, whether you're, you know, a dog coming in <laughs> during the interview, like, right. <laughs> okay. um, whether you're, whether you're stuck and you feel like you've just, you know, you can't get past where you are. Like it, it is possible for you, like whatever it is that you're working towards, everything is possible. So I think that's number one is just remembering that everything takes time. Um, and it takes time and intention together. But the second thing I hope that people take away my big, that I want them to take away from our me today Mm -hmm. is that I really want them to understand they have to look at their capacity first before they set their goal. That is part of the formula to set the right goals that they can achieve. It's just making sure that the, they're not setting a goal that requires more time than they have available. Yeah. I think they're good tips. Um, the first one I, uh, someone had said, I'd heard someone say something like if the desire is inside of you, then like you have all the skills to create that, that goal. Um, which I think again, you know, going back to belief and doubt and, you know, I mean, our brain is always like, you know, we have these wonderful ideas and then your brain's like, well, we can't do that. You know, like that's not possible. So don't let your brain override (laughs) your dreams. Go after them. Get that get that primitive brain in check. That's right. I always tell them like <laughs> there, I did an episode on it. So you guys can Google it um, or look back through the podcast and episodes, but like, you know, doubt likes to be the backseat driver. It likes to tell you like the parent or whoever it is that's back there, like, oh, you should turn left here. Oh no, you slammed on the brakes way too fast. You're going too fast, you know, or whatever it's telling you. And I'm like, it's going to be there. It's not going to go away, but just tell it to go sit way in the back. Like <laughs> be quiet. <laughs> yeah. Well, Wendy, thank you so much for being on. I know we spent a lot of time talking and chatting and laughing, which I absolutely love. I hope everyone loves the episode. Um, Wendy gave a lot of awesome tips and help and go get her 90 day slay book. Again, it's 90 days, the 90, the 90 days day slay slay dot dot com. Com. So we'll have that in the show links. Um, and again, Wendy, Wendy, thank you so much for being on. And I 
hopefully we'll have you on again because it was so it was my pleasure nicole thank you so much have a great rest of your day you're welcome and everybody who is listening um stay tuned for the next episode which will be dropping next tuesday have a wonderful day bye bye